And so you start out with a differential. I create some differential DQ. It has an electric field in that particular direction right there. I, again, I only can care about the horizontal components because the vertical components will cancel out because of symmetry. And let me create a angle theta here. And so to find my electric field, we'll just call this point P. The electric field at point P is equal to K Q. I guess the differential of the electric field, K dQ over R squared times the cosine of theta. Now we go through the process of getting down to a single variable. We do have three variables involved uh, at this point on the right hand side. Q, R, and theta are all variables, so we start working our way in there. I'm going to define this distance from here to here as dx, or dy, whatever letter you want to use. I'm using dx. I do need to throw in uniform linear charge density. my electric field at point P. Oh, I left my, I'm going to make to the right positive. If you don't like defining it, it's a two-dimensional problem, but one of the dimensions we already can figure out what the answer is, but vertically the electric field is zero. So if you prefer, you can make that positive I hat if you want to, but I'm just going to make it positive because ultimately it's one direction for my final answer. So E is equal to A dQ over R squared cosine theta. If I look at my triangle, so if I have an electric field here, um, oops, that's not what I wanted. X is the distance to there. So charge density is Q over my length, my total length. So it would be 5 nanocoulombs over 0.4 meters. And that would be equal to dq over dx. So dq is equal to lambda dx. I also know physically from my triangle right there, this is X. This is 0.2 meters, and why don't we give it a letter? I want a capital R. And this is little, little r. So I know little r squared is equal to capital R squared plus X squared. And the last thing is cosine of theta, since theta is this angle right here. Cosine of theta is R, big R over little r, adjacent over the hypotenuse. So we can simplify just like we did before. All right, so this, we got Ke integral. So dq, I got lambda dx. I'm going to leave the r squared there for right now because cosine of theta is big R over little r. Getting my little r's together before I do that substitution. Pull out my constant, so I have Ke lambda big R times the integral dx over R cubed. I know what R squared is, so R cubed has got to be that raised to the three halves. So that's Ke, equal sign there, Ke lambda big R integral dx over big R squared plus X squared raised to the three halves. I now have it in terms of a single variable, finding the limits of integration work quite nicely now, and X will go from negative 0.2 to 0.2. So 
Since I define x to be from here, this, that would therefore just make that zero. And then the question comes in, how do we solve the integral? Something like it. Yeah. How'd you solve it? Uh, I did it with trace though. Oh, okay. I knew you said there was another way, but I couldn't remember it. What's the other way of doing it besides trace substitution? There's a shortcut on one of the paths. <laughs> okay. Uh, or bottom line, look it up. Yep. Which is what I'm going to do right now. Squared square root of big R squared plus x squared from negative point two to point two. And now it becomes the calculator exercise for the most part. So I got k times q over l, that's my lambda. That r cancels out with one of those, and so I also have a big R on the bottom. And then point 0.2 over the square root of point 0.2 squared plus point 0.2 squared minus negative point 0.2 over square root of point 0.2 squared plus negative point 0.2 squared. And this over here becomes 979. Q is 5 nano equivalent, so 5 times 10 to the negative 9. L is 0.4, and big R is 0.2 times that. And shortly, someone's going to give me the answer make my life just a little bit more complete. Oh, that's right, because point two cancel out about the one over square root of two plus one over square root of two. Okay. She gives five hundred sixty-two point five. Five hundred and sixty-two point five? Yeah. Finish it off. Field or volts. This is electric field. Electric field, so uh, coulombs over meters. Oh. Now I'm butchering the name. Uh, Newtons per coulomb. Newtons, Newtons, Newtons per coulomb. Newtons per coulomb. It is a vector. Uh, I'm going to stick the plus sign in front of it just to emphasize the fact that it is in the positive direction as we have defined it. If you do not define the positive direction and you just leave it at 562.5 Newtons per coulomb, you haven't defined the direction. So please make sure you recognize it is a vector. 
it seems disturbing to me not to put a I hat or J hat in front of it or after it, but you know, it's the bed I made. I'm gonna live with it. And now we can, oh, questions before we find the electric potential, or as it will often be called, the potential. I had a different answer. Would you have? I got 794.6. Yeah. Inside the parentheses should be two square root two. So I think. You had two square root of two? I think so. Because that would be point two over point two radical two plus point two over point two radical two. So I get one over radical two plus one over radical two, which is two over radical two, which is radical two. Uh, I think, yeah, you're right. The 794.6? No, <clears throat> square root of two. So you're sticking with what you had before? Yep. Okay. You want to stand up and ask Colin who raised it? No, it's, it's the 500. Yeah. How could you? No, I'd, I'd rather work those things out now than you know later. So I got 795.5. <laughs> it's 9e to the 9th, then 5e to the negative 9th. Mm -hmm. Square root 2, then divided by 0 0.1, 0 0.2, right? Uh, yep. Yeah, I'm getting 795.5. So the numerator here would be 45. 45 divided by 0 0.08 times the square root of 2. So 45 divided by 0 0.08. Is that it? Or just all at once? What is it? You got the 795 point something? Mm hmm. I do. I bet it's square rooted. And you don't square root it, you won't get the. Um, 562.5 multiplied by the square root, you will get 700. Oh, so the 562.5 was just this piece? Yeah. Oh, yeah, I realized that just now. I didn't I didn't multiply it by the square root of 2. So it's 79.5.5? Mm -hmm. I assume you used 8.99 instead of 9 for equivalence constant? Yeah. Okay. Does anyone want to stand up and say something to Joseph? I got half of it, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the moral of the lesson here, and it's usually not an issue with 251, 252 students, is show your work. Yeah. It's the 110 students. I'm still trying to figure out how to get them to show their work. Anyway. Colin, I apologize for. I, I double checked myself and got his answer the second time, so. Because uh, I, I feel like, because I've got it right here where I plugged it in and multiplied it by the square root of two, and it gave me that number. So. All right, so it's somewhere. <laughs> Leads me. When you rewrite your notes and you work it through again, you'll come up with a third answer. And, and All right, so the electric potential. The big advantage of the electric potential is it's not a vector. Therefore, we are not, we, we're not canceling out anything automatically. But the big thing is that with potential, this co the cosine to theta term does not exist. Because all I care about is how close is it to the charge dq. So this becomes Ke dq over r. I only have two unknowns that I need to get in terms of a single unknown. And using the work that we just did, this becomes Ke. So dq is lambda dx. And little r here is the square root of big R squared plus x squared. I now have it in terms of a single variable. And x will go from negative 0.2 to 
lambda is a constant, it comes up front. And so I'm left with ke lambda integral dx over the square root of r squared plus x squared. The negative point two to the point two. And let's see if I can actually write that so it can be seen. And now the question is, how do you solve this integral? That's the way I would go. It's physics class. <laughs> Math purists. Yeah, again, physics. It's perfectly fine to look it up. The math people do this stuff for us. That's their whole purpose in life is to meet the needs of the physicists. And if we come, up on, come, come across a problem which the mathematicians haven't solved yet, you are allowed to ask them why not. And then let me know how that goes. <laughs> so this one, blue, this is going to be a ticket. So we got K, oh, that's not bad. K E lambda, uh, actually we can go ahead and put capital Q over the length. And look at it up. We get the natural log. Oh, x plus the square root of big R squared plus x squared from negative 0 0.2 to 0 0.2. Technically, the formula, it's the absolute value of that, but it's not an issue for us. And so kq over l times natural log of 0.2 plus the square root of 0.2 squared plus 0.2 squared minus the natural log of point, negative 0.2 plus the square root of 0.2 squared plus 0.2 squared. That becomes 45 over 0.4 is this piece right here. And then whatever that is. I got 
198.3. What would the units be? Again, those two Vs do not mean the same thing. No. <laughs> Probably won't forget that one. There's my reason in the first semester course of why I don't want to using capital N for normal forces because capital N is also the unit and you get this kind of mess where you've got two Ns in an equation that don't mean the same thing. It can't be helped here unless we want to just deviate from standard to. Right. So do we have a third answer? I got 198.3 also. So we got two, two for this one and one for that one. I got 280, but I'm checking that out. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody get some get it different than what they had before? Uh, I got one ninety eight this time. Okay. <laughs> yeah, it, you know, there's some of these these problems getting really complex, and it's just it's frustrating to see getting really complex, and then the, the one mistake is a careless error on the calculator. 